Hi everyone, my name is Barney and today we're going to do a talk show and the topic will be debunking myths about doing business in Vietnam. Uh, there will be three people today helping answer some of those questions. I'll be one of them. So my name is Barney and I'm the co-owner of BizLen. I specialize in business startup and scale-up consulting. My business partner, Moraine, he's also joining us here today. Moraine specializes in business formation and market entry into Vietnam. Moraine has a master's degree in law and worked in Vietnamese legal field for, for many years. He's worked in some of the biggest law firms in Vietnam. Also, we have Simon. Simon is a Vietnamese legal expert. He's a qualified lawyer and a member of the Vietnam Bar Federation. So he has 11 years experience in business law. Okay, without further ado, let's begin with the first myth. I always need to have a Vietnamese partner in order to start a business in Vietnam. Thanks, Barney, for the introduction. Um, so let's start off by saying that I'm happy to say that this myth is not true. You do not always need a Vietnamese partner in order to start a business in Vietnam. In fact, there are many fields of business in Vietnam that are open to 100% foreign investment. And in Vietnam, we call this the concept of business lines. Mm -hmm. Each company that is registered in Vietnam must select one or more business lines. For example, restaurant activities, manufacturing of clothes, software development, etc. Whether or not 100% foreign ownership is allowed, that depends on which business lines you want to register. For example, cafes, restaurants, software development, management consulting, manufacturing and trading of many products. For all those business lines, 100% foreign investment is allowed. There is no legal requirement to have a Vietnamese partner on board. Um, having said that, there are a few business lines that are so-called conditional. And conditional, as the word says, means that there is a condition that the Vietnamese authorities uh, apply a condition before they will allow you to do a business or investment in that field in Vietnam. So one condition, for example, could be that you need to apply for additional licenses. For example, an international tourism license or a real estate license. Another condition could be that you have to invest a certain amount of money, a certain amount of capital. This applies, for example, to uh, real estate uh, trading or uh, travel agents. And another condition could be that, in fact, you have to work together with a Vietnamese partner. And this is what you call a joint venture. Now, examples of business lines that require a joint venture are, for example, advertisement, movie production, and travel agencies. Often there is no minimum percentage required for the Vietnamese partner in the joint venture. So the Vietnamese partner could hold 1%, 51% or 99%. But the exact rule, the exact percentage that is required, that depends on the business line that you want to register. Now, the main point that I want to make here about this myth is that many business lines in Vietnam, including some very popular ones, food and beverage, software development, manufacturing, are in fact open to 100% foreign investment. There is no joint venture requirement. Only a few business lines are actually have that requirement, but many very popular business lines, you can do it 100% foreign owned. Now, that is the legal side of things, but there may still be some very good reasons why you want to work together with a Vietnamese partner. So not a legal requirement, but, but by your own choice. So I would like to give the word to, to Simon now, because I'm sure he can tell you a bit about the procedures of how to register a Vietnamese company or a foreign owned company in Vietnam. So please, Simon. You know, about the difference between uh, in registration British, uh, between foreign and Vietnamese owned company, you know? Mm -hmm. A Vietnamese owned company can't freely register a company. No. In the meanwhile, foreign investor must meet all the requirements. For example, in terms of uh, financial capacity, company address, Vietnamese partners, and other conditions, if required. A Vietnamese mm -hmm. is only required to apply for an um, enterprise registration certificate, I usually call an 
ESC. However, of foreign investors must apply for both investment registration certificate and enterprise registration certificate. It will take us less than one week to have a Vietnamese to set up a company, but uh, it will take us around three to four weeks to have a foreign clients to um, set up a, a foreign our company. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, during the com company formation process, you know, foreign investor need to provide proof of finance, company address, and proof of other conditions if it's, they are required by law. Yeah, that, that are the, the main difference between uh, uh, a foreign our company and Vietnamese our company. Mm -hmm. And also maybe just one, one question as well. So if uh, someone registers a Vietnamese owned company first and then transfers it to a foreigner, what are the yes. pros and cons and also like the laws and maybe the risks as well? You know, and, um, there are two ways for a foreign investor to, to, to have a, a foreign company in Vietnam. First, they can uh, set up a new foreign out company or they can um, purchase mm -hmm. by an existing local company. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, you know many uh, local company formation agents recommend, you know, this way, I mean, uh, they uh, recommend their clients to, uh, to, to, to have some, I mean, a Vietnamese person to have them set up a Vietnam company first and then transfer the, the capital to uh, the foreign investor. Yeah, it's very uh, usual here, but, and it is 100% legal. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the pros, the advantage of this uh, approach is, will take only, I mean, less than one week to set up a Vietnamese our company. So if a foreign um, investor needs to have a com company very soon for some purposes, you know, they can mm. follow this way. Yeah. So it's slightly faster, yeah. Yes, yes. And, you know, a foreign investor don't have to apply for an, an IRC. Mm -hmm. If they buy an uh, existing local company, yeah, and you know, or maybe during sorry, the... just, just to jump in there. So, uh, as I understand, uh, the foreigner doesn't need to apply for the IRC, but the foreigner still must get their uh, buying of the business approved by the Department of Planning and Investment. Is that right? So it must be yes, still yes, approved. Yes, yes. Okay. they need to get an appro approval first you know, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in order to buy the, the, the existing local company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they don't have to show proof of uh, finance or company address during the, uh, the, 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 the purchase, the capital purchase process. That's, that's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that is the, the main reason yeah. some foreign clients choose, choose big way. Yeah, and about the, the uh, disadvantage of this um, approach, you know, uh, to do this, your foreign clients need to have a Vietnamese nominee. Yeah, that they can trust, you know, because they need to pay, you know, the nominee for the capital purchased. Mm. Yeah, and uh, they must pay for the capital purchase through the, the company's capital account. Yeah, so essentially there'll be a time period where the Vietnamese nominee will have access to all that capital. And uh, yes. so that, that, that's where the risk is, yeah. yeah. So you, yes. obviously you must that's find a nominee the risk, you can trust. The, the risk of this way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, and also you know, the, uh, the amount of capital, if it's a Vietnamese-owned company first and then it will be transferred to foreign ownership, does the capital need to be more 
or would it be less, much less than opening a fully foreign-owned business? Actually, you know, um, because um, uh, as I said, it's it very easy for Vietnam, Vietnamese to set up a company, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 because the once when the company uh, is uh, newly set up, it's illegal, you know. So, yeah. so when you um, when the Vietnamese uh, normally transfer the, the the capital, the I mean, sell the business to a, a foreigner, you know. They don't have to, to rise up the, the capital first to do so. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, to this way, the foreign investor must follow the payment process. I mean, you know, to pay for the, the Vietnamese nominees. If they fail to follow this process, mm. you know, they will... Um, not be allowed to transfer the capital and profits overseas yeah. in the future. Hmm. So in, in summary, I think it's, uh, if you have a Vietnamese uh, company set up first and you use a Vietnamese nominee, it's much faster. Also the yeah. investment capital could be lower, uh, but some of the, the risks there, you have to give the capital to the, the Vietnamese partner and it's still quite high risk. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think it's interesting to know. So. Uh, practic- practically speaking, I think it's, uh, it can be helpful to have a Vietnamese partner on board, especially for some restricted business lines, some difficult business lines with potentially some red tape. Uh, for example, if you open a bar or education, I think uh, it might be easier to have a Vietnamese partner, but it's not really required. I think it's very important to, to have a good lawyer and also a very good accountant. I think the accountant is one of the most important things as well. And uh, okay, so I think that myth is definitely busted. You don't need a Vietnamese partner to open a a company in Vietnam and it can be fully foreign owned uh, for most sectors. So myth busted.